Welcome, everyone, and this is a new episode of the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute podcast, and I am your host, Supreme Decisions. And those of you that have an opportunity to view this, I'm in 4K today. So, I want you guys to sit back, relax, understand this is going to be a doozy. But it's also for the police apologists. And what I mean by that is I've done videos, I've done podcasts that spoke about criminalizing life. I've done videos, I've done podcasts that spoke about the ideals of how much justice are you will, how much justice can you afford? And then I talk about the simple ideals of politics and policy, how they play a role in our everyday life and what is being used as revenue, not for the people, but for the cities and those that quote unquote run them and how they're using them against the people that they're supposed to be protecting. Now, I actually have an opportunity today to go at one of my favorite targets that I haven't done in, a, I want to say about a year, year and a half, but it's the Arizona Police Department. Well, the police departments, put an S on that. Now, I'm going to give you something because one of the things that I learned today was it was I was dumbfounded for the most part because I'm sure you guys remember back in, I believe it was 2019, I went on a Twitter rant with me and the chief director of the Phoenix Police Force, whatever, the union guy, the head, the head guy of um, Phoenix, because on the 4th of July, Six police officers, two of which were army veterans, were in a Starbucks. A young lady asked the manager there at Starbucks to either, hey, can I pay for their coffees and they move tables or could they go outside or could they take them to go? Gave them a few options. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I do know there was an opportunity for their coffees to be paid for and them to either move tables or to leave or something to that effect. I made a comment on there about the situation and lo and behold, the comment was responded to. My response was in time because the director made reference to the two army vets, but what he did not make reference to was that those two army vets made a decision that was not forced upon them because they were given options. They made a decision to leave. He took it upon himself to speak on their behalf and speaking on their behalf, I stated from an article that I posted yesterday on my social media, the Arizona Police Department, the Phoenix Police Department is killing one citizen per day every five days, or well, one citizen every five days. And my reference after that, because I posted it on that Twitter timeline, and I then stated, if you want people to be comfortable around you, you shouldn't kill them. That was my response. I was then banned from Twitter for, I believe, a month for bullying. But also in that same time frame, ticket, whatever, however you want to tweet, tweet a sphere, there was a young man that pointed out the comments of the Phoenix police chief. I believe her name is Jerry Williams. Jerry Williams had stated because of that at that time, Phoenix had not only broken a record and it was a July for an entire year, which was 41 police killings. The previous record was 31 for an entire year. By July, they had 41 kills on the police force. In a conference that was actually televised and has since been deleted, Jerry Williams stated it was the police's, it was the citizens' fault the police were shooting them. I'm gonna say that one more time. The police chief of Phoenix, Jerry Williams, stated that it was the citizens' fault that the police were shooting them. Now, with that being referenced at that point, 
a young man pointed out, I guess it was the five-year-old's fault for being at the playground. That resonated with me because of what they are attempting to do now. They are looking for least amounts of accountability. And they're looking to pass a new bill. I call it the no view bill. Because what they're attempting to do is to stop First Amendment auditors. Now, let me let me rewind it a little bit. The Supreme Court has already deemed in several, several, several cases that it is perfectly legal to give or to view a police officer in action. When I talked about criminalizing life, oftentimes you're told, you better not re curse at a police officer that's, that's disorderly or d disruptive or some shit, disorderly conduct. Well, there's actually not because of this thing called the fighting words doctrine. And there are literally five cases that go under that one. And there are several that are part of those five cases. But then you'll hear, if you don't give me your name, you're interfering with an investigation, which is also a lie because Florida v. Royal states, I don't have to participate in your investigation. And this thing called the United States Constitution, which every police officer swore to uphold and defend states, as a citizen, I have the right to remain silent. So again, when we're being hit with secondary charges as a primary source with criminalizing life. And then when I talk about using it for revenue or I'm speaking of things in the instance of, what did Trevor call it? Trevor call it, uh, yes, quotas. And people tell me, no, that's not true. That's not what happens. And then when we show you the actual facts, numbers, and the police officers that have been caught doing it in multiple police stations around this country, what is it then? Well, with this no view bill or no filming the police bill, anyone caught within 15 feet of an Arizona police officer filming them while they're in arrest or performing an arrest or something of that nature, it is deemed unlawful and they can not only be fined, they can actually have the discretion. The police officer makes a determination if they're going to also send this person to jail. Notice what I use? The police officer is gonna exercise free will to arrest someone for doing something they have a right to do with someone that they have a right to do it with. Now. Gonna, I'm gonna say one of these little stupid Supreme Court cases because oftentimes you run into these matters and you don't have any context. One of the people I had an opportunity of interacting with is this guy, Turner V. Driver. He went to the Supreme Court in 2017 and filming the police contributes to the public's ability to hold the police accountable ensuring that the police officers are not abusing their power and make informed decisions about police policies. Filming the police also frequently helps officers. For example, a citizen's recording might corroborate a probable cause finding or might even exonerate an officer charged with wrongdoing. They are saying from this day on, it is a constitutionally protected First Amendment right to film the police. And this was in 2007. I have others. But... I want you to understand something. Turner v. Driver wasn't the first case. Turner v. Driver isn't even a case that set precedent, but it reinforced the actual precedent. But here's, here's where it gets great. Arizona, Arizona, still leading the nation in police officers, you know, killing citizens. 
the people they protect and defend. Now, I'm going to give you an example because the reason why I read Turner V Driver because the impact of it stated, filming the police also frequently helps officers. There was a deemed ambush by a young man in Phoenix. And the craziest part about this was the simple fact that this bill would have made what this man or photographer did illegal. There was an ambush. Nine police officers were either shot or injured in some fashion doing a um, domestic call, which is also one of the high alert calls, which had a wife that was murdered and a infant child that was involved in the fracas. Now, in the midst of the gunfire, there was a point in which the police body camera was inefficient and ineffective in showing the actual actions or the ongoings of the things that surrounded that situation. The Phoenix Police Department's public relations person decided that he was going to give his depiction with the manipulated police body cam from, I believe, again, it was nine officers that were injured. I believe it was 11 total on scene and or at the culmination of it. 11 officers. So mashing all these body cameras together, manipulating it to be how it was narrated. But he put something in there that I thought was, a, a, just, it, it was just dumbfounded. It just, it was astounding because it goes directly against the bill that was passed on that day. This guy states, the photographer's video was better than the police officer's body cam and offered an exoneration that supported the officer's statement that were on scene. I'm gonna say that one more time. The photographer's video was better than the police body camera and it offered support of the officer's statements that were on scene, yet, if that photographer, if this bill passes, would have been arrested for exonerating the very police that they're saying the videotaping of makes them uncomfortable. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm read something else to you because I thought this was completely astonishing because for whatever reason, I have, I find, you know, watching or just kind of skimming through shows on Netflix and various other channels, kind of exhilarating. Well, one of the things I like was Carrie Washington. I love watching her and pretty much anything other than Scandal. But she had a character in American Son, and she said something that caught my attention. Because again, it goes along with this bill, but it also kind of goes along with some of the stories I've given you because of the down South Georgia homeboy treatment and it's simply, it encompasses a lot of the things that I speak about. When I talk about my own interactions with police, I talk about movies like The Hate You Give and how my own stories can relate directly to the conversation that was had during these interactions. But the simple fact it says, keep your hands on the wheel, boy. Wouldn't wanna make the man in the bulletproof vest aiming a glot at your head nervous. keep your hands on the wheel, boy, would not want to make the man in a bulletproof vest that is aiming a Glock at your head nervous. Yeah, that's a little somber because when you have a police officer repeat that, they're being trained that everybody's out to hurt them. Everybody's a bad guy. And then it goes into these things called Philando Castile, keep your hands on the wheel, boy.
even keeping his hands on the wheel and telling the police officer he's a licensed gun carrier. He was murdered. His fiance had to remain more calm than the actual trained professional. She streamed it on Facebook Live. Geronimo's partner asked him, why did you shoot? Geronimo was visually distraught. We look at, you know what? I'm going to understand. I want you to understand something. Because I often talk about the context whenever I'm saying these things because they sound far-fetched. A lot of people probably don't even see the Philando Castile conversation as I just gave it, which is cool, but I'm going to give you another one. The Arizona police reacting to a young lady, three years old, that stole a doll, one dollar doll from the Dollar Tree or Dollar General in Phoenix. It was videotaped by the city of citizens. The police officers were escalating a one dollar shoplifting, told the mother, get the F out the car, I'm going to blow your effing brains out. The police are confronted not by the people who are cooperating with them, but by the citizens that are there and telling them, calm down. You need to calm down. You need to de-escalate. But Arizona governor and police chief and senator are all in unison. And we don't want the citizens filming us. It's illegal if they film us. When in fact, video didn't exonerate the officers it actually proved that the officers were liars i'm going to go deeper into that too because again that's under jerry williams watch she was supporting their actions even after the video came out even after their police reports leaked even after it was shown that they flat out lied not only about the interactions but even about the quote-unquote resistance of the quote-unquote suspects. If they're doing the right thing, why are they hiding it? Isn't that what they tell us? If we're doing, we have nothing to hide, why don't we cooperate? If we're cooperating, why are they lying? If we're cooperating, why are they escalating? If we're cooperating, why they don't want the world to see it? If those are the questions that we're asking, why isn't being reciprocated the same way it was being given out? Understand that. So now I'm going to go into going into my Hawaiian vacation. And I don't know if you can call it vacation, but I enjoyed myself for the most part. You know, enjoyed the person, people, whatever that I was with, that I was there and enjoyed my time with. But it's understanding this. I want you to catch it. Ready? I saw a young lady because they were protesting, which I don't know what the hell you can protest and why other than, you know, everything's high. You're landlocked. So. But she had a sign that said, I live in a country where a untrained, unarmed person has to be more prepared and professional than the actual trained professional. I just gave you the context of Philando Castile. I just gave you the context of the police, Phoenix Police Department, who is, you know, the leading murderers of police departments in the United States. And they're also the ones that don't want you seeing anything. The question is why? If it worked once to exonerate an officer, because I can actually think of two where in the fact Sean King was supporting women that lied on Texas police officers and just so happened they released video for like it was the fastest video release I had ever seen in my life a body cam video where it showed that these women were lying but yet we don't want them using it in fact 
when we're thinking about it, we're looking at the citizens are the problem when nobody spoke about the improper training of these police officers. Nobody speaks about the simple fact that these people are not even prepared to interact. I did literally a series that spoke about the number of police involved shootings from the Arizona police and the number of people that had been involved in multiple shootings by the Arizona police, but the citizens are the problem because they're making these people that are armed to the teeth nervous because they're making these people. Now a camera is dangerous. Because the Senate is pushing a bill to make it a misdemeanor to film police while performing their duties. Now, also that something that was learned in the context of doing this is, I'm going to give you something. I'm, a 2011 case is Glick versus Cuniff. Recording the actions and activities of police officers in the performance of their public duties is a form of speech through which individuals may gather, disseminate information of public concern. Recording of any police activity performed in public or where an individual otherwise has a legal right to be present. When I spoke about things like this and the Open Government Act, and it gave you context of even what a reporter is everybody's media because of this thing called youtube because of this thing called facebook because of this thing called instagram snapchat i mean i could go on and on but at the end of the day it's still tiktok now because you're allowed to put three minute videos up these are ideals which no one wants to actually have a conversation about because these ideals go against the matrix. It goes against the simple fact that I'm not allowed to do the right thing the wrong way. Because when Turner spoke about the ideals of doing it right, when they spoke about accountability, and I speak about destroying the ideals of proper policing, when you're hiding this amount of evidence, when you're going away from the thing that allows us to be better than what we were yesterday, you are going at the exact same thing that people have a problem with. So instead of looking for an actual solution to the actual problem, which is police training, we're going to continue to hide it as if it doesn't exist. We're going to continue to not address the problem in hopes that it goes away. Now, I even looked at one of the statements that was that was put by the Arizona House Committee bill approves criminalizing filming cops on the job. Now, the one thing I talk about is the lack of people that fight back. I'm talking about 5% of everyone that's charged. Regardless of what the charges are, 5% of people fight back. Now, here's a statement that comes from a columnist, Billy Binion. And I apologize if I'm screwed your name up, but he wrote on February 22nd, 2022. You know, great day because that's my birthday. Anyway, you'll have a bunch of people who plead to avoid trial or go broke trying to vindicate their rights. Understand this. They're looking to pass something they know is illegal, but they're also criminalizing those because, you know, if you get arrested, you must have did something, even though they know the actions of the police officers will be illegal. Even though they know the actions of the police officers will be illegal. Even though they know the actions of the police officers will be legal, the police officers are going to be trained. You know what my boy said? They're being punished for doing what they're trained to do. Now, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis because most of us don't know what a First Amendment auditor is. There are generally people that go around with a camera. And they film police in their normal everyday activity to see, one, how they respond to people with a camera. 
And what, what kills me is the one thing that, oh, well, well, I'm recording too. Yet, when we request those recordings, it's a problem. Or it's redacted. Or it's manipulated. Or it's so short, it doesn't matter. But again, I thought you were recording. I thought you were talking about transparency. And Arizona actually has a transparency office. But here's the, here's the great part about it. In their transparency office, they talk about their policy. Their policy actually states, body-worn camera on all those in patrol. Remember, I also just spoke about police discretion. Remember that. I want you to catch that. Police officer discretion. Police officer discretion. Free will of the police officer. Now, we talk about this because... Arizona police officers in all their police stations and all the police departments have an opportunity to turn on or off their own video cameras. Now, what happens is when their car stops moving, there's a 30 second delay for audio. So for 30 seconds, there's no audio or 30 seconds prior to video or the officer's activation. So note that the officer isn't even activating their camera or body camera while they're in the car. It's something that's done once they activate it. There's a 30 second delay. Now, the most beautiful thing about this is I found it just, 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 just damnly interesting was the fact that this same public Officer, I guess you call that. The young man stated, the Phoenix police don't currently have dash cameras. Yet, I've watched this thing called Live PD. I've watched these other videos that was depicting or showing DUIs in Phoenix by Phoenix police officers. And each one of those police officers said this thing that I thought was very interesting because of the statement. Wasn't interesting at the time, but it's interesting because of this statement. All of them said, come to the front of my car. Why? So you can be on camera when they're doing a the sobriety test. Isn't that amazing? They have cameras for sobriety tests, but not for criminal activity. Isn't, isn't that amazing? But at the same time, it's part of the programming. They don't want you going to look for something they're saying they don't have, yet it is something that they're using against you if you are doing something that they deem unlawful that is not a crime. Oh, whoops. Yes, I pause for dramatic effect on that because I want you to think about what I just said. I want you to understand the things that I'm giving you. I want you to understand exactly what it is I'm saying because if I keep trying to hide something from you, you're going to have a problem with all of my content. Understand that because I'm going to give you something because I talked, I spoke about the number of lawsuits, even the mental stability or instability um, of the shooting of Daniel, Daniel Shavers, right? And now I go into a federal lawsuit because again, I talk about stock language. I talk about things such as, you know, not being able to tell the truth. I also talk about the manufacturing of evidence because there is no evidence, there is no probable cause. Now, there was a federal lawsuit filed on Monday, last Monday, not this one, last Monday. Police Chief Jerry Williams, Lieutenant Benjamin Moore, Sergeant Douglas McBride, and Commander Dennis Orender planned and approved mass arrest of 124 individuals with the use of manufactured evidence copy and paste probable cause you remember i spoke about the the i the entire ideals of what it means to be a police officer i can george v prince you to death doesn't change the numbers but the reason why you would have a copy and paste evidence or probable cause is if you have someone that's not able to articulate. Someone that's not intelligent. 
doesn't have the ability to be articulable. Understand that. I wouldn't need copy and paste if someone was actually showing what was illegal. If I was looking at an activity that was unlawful, it wouldn't take copy and paste. If I was looking at something that was actually deemed unfit, I wouldn't need copy and paste, but I also wouldn't blame someone else for the actions of myself. Now, you know how they got out of this, how these people got these cases thrown out? The video of citizens. What if I told you What if I told you that there was video? And because of the videoing, videotaping of police officers in Arizona and their actions, it costs the state of Arizona $50 million just last year. Would that be something that would be interesting? Would that be something where federal funding would actually kind of overlook or actually kind of grasp your attention a little bit more? I mean, I just want to know which one would it be? Because at the end of the day, I want you to understand this. I want you to be able to grasp the context of what it is that we're actually talking about. Because I want to arrest you for not seeing me. I want you to not see me. I don't want you to see anything I'm doing. But I want you to think that I'm a good person. I don't want you to look at anything that, you know, it's almost as if I had a young lady say, well, it's easy for you to say this on a podcast because no one can see you. And my response to her was only if there was a place where there were hundreds of videos of my face. Only if there was a place that she could actually type in Supreme Decisions and see pictures. Only if there was a place that we can actually see good policing. Only if there was a place that we can see good police work. We're still looking. Because here's the, here's the greatest part about it. The, the statement of people vindicating themselves. I often talk about the bullying, right? Because they're using Gestapo tactics. They're using intimidation techniques. They're using the read techniques, which are illegal. They're using the read techniques because I'm actually going to do a couple videos where we talk about the semantics of wordplay. And it's a beautiful thing because whenever you're giving it out to someone, it's, it's great because the ideals of what it is and how it is. What I want you to see is everything that I'm giving you is for a purpose, it's for a direction, it's for understanding. Because I want you to go back and look back. I believe it's video somewhere between 92 and 100. But I spoke about when someone says, stop videotaping, First Amendment violation. If they stop the videotape, it's destruction of evidence. It's not a state crime. That's a federal crime. If they delete it, it's destruction of evidence. That is a federal crime. If they're covering up the fact that they did something, Understand the following through of stop recording is a Fourth Amendment violation because it's called a show of authority stop, Terry v. Ohio. Because a command can work as a seizure if you follow that command. And the simple fact that no one wants to retrain these officers, to me, is a problem. The simple fact that no one wants to say, 
you know what? Maybe we shouldn't be doing that. That's the problem. The simple ideals of saying, I want to make sure our officers are safe by hiding them, by making them cowards, by showing us that they're not worthy of respect because most of the videos we see, the new programming, they're not very respectful. The simple fact that no one wants to retrain them, that's the problem. And if you're thinking that this bill is a good idea, you're a problem too. Because everyone is a fan of police until the police do something to you. And I'm going to give you and I'm going to end with a story. Because a friend of mine, I think I've, I've told this once or twice. But a friend of mine had a similar situation of the young lady down in Fort Worth, Texas. You know, when there was a wellness call. Hey, my neighbor's door is wide open. I don't see anybody. So I don't know if she's falling because again, she's there by herself. I'm not going over there because I know better. I'm not finding nobody dead and my skin is dark. Gotcha. Called a non-emergency line. Four officers park down the street. One officer walks around the house with the doors open with his gun drawn, yells freeze, and before a response can be made by a young lady, she shot and killed in front of her grandchild. I go to this because it's actually his body camera that showed that he was a fucking idiot and he was rightfully sued because of his actions were that on negligence. But again, I fought the training because they're training him to be a coward. But this young lady, my friend, she had a ex that was stalking her. He would constantly show up at her job, constantly show up at her house. They had been dating for, I believe, six or eight months. But when it started getting to the point to where she didn't want to be in the relationship any longer, she filed a restraining order against him. He didn't like that a whole lot. But again, she's a single lady. And one day, she calls the police. Said, hey, this dude is parking down the street from my house. I don't feel comfortable. Because again, she believes in the policing system. Police tell us, well, as long as he's not within the 100 feet, there's nothing we can do. Nothing we're going to do. Well, he's calling, he's texting. No action from the police. She refused to answer the door, refused to respond to any of his advances, seeing her presence. So one day, he calls the police to do a wellness check. Oh, she hasn't, I haven't talked to her in a couple of days, which was true. And I'm worried about her, which was bullshit because he knew she was home. He follows the police to her house. As the police are going through the door, he yells, hey, you might want to be kind of loud because she, she's kind of hard of hearing and she has a gun. Now the police who were knocking on the door grab their firearms. They kick open her door because she doesn't respond to them knocking on the door. Now, give you a little backstory. She's upstairs. She's got her headphones because she's having trouble sleeping. You know, has a little bit of insomnia, so she listens to music and she takes medication. Well, she also sleeps with her gun under a pillow because she's a single woman. They kick open the door. The vibrations startle her. She turns around and rips the cover off her to sit up. When she sits up, the police officer shoots her twice in the stomach. The police officer states 
He was in fear for his life because he knew she had a gun. Not that she was pointing at him. I think we can go with another story that happened in Phoenix similar to that. But now, when she goes down to kind of get some relief from the police, they treat her as a pariah. They're treating her as the criminal. When in fact, the criminal is the one who did things to manipulate these attack dogs and set them off to attack. But nobody wants to address the training. She is no longer pro-police. She's no longer infallible police officer because she knows better. Because even now, she wants to know about the situation, not just the actions of the officer, which is how we all should be. But I'm going to give you something, because when you're saying the citizens are the problem, I'm going to give you a few, a few Arizona issues. Because Arizona in March 1963 gave us Miranda v. Arizona gave us Gantt v. Arizona. But as I go down, August 2002, Detective Christopher J. Williams Wilson resigned from the department when he was accused of 10 counts of sex with underage boys. Two thousand twelve, Detective George Contreras pled no contest to misdemeanor charges or false reports concerning after hour security. Mark Ryan shot twice and killed Romaine Brisbane in a parking garage while Brisbane was trying to pick up food for his family. Brisbane was unarmed. And witnesses explained that Ryan had not stated any reason as to why he stopped Bryson. August 2017, Phoenix Police Officer Christopher Tirino, Tirino, I guess T U R I A N O, shot a protester in the groin. Gotta make America great, I guess. The Phoenix Police Department reported shooting 44 people, more than the number of people shot the year by the LAPD or NYPD. While on, only 23 of them were fatal, this number was higher than any past year of the department. Guess who was police chief in that year? Because in March 2018, Arizona police officers shot 17 people statewide. But citizens are the problem. May 27, 2019, Davern Amos was dragged out of his car, verbally harassed and beaten by a police officer who accused Amos of stealing a toy from a nearby store. In the car at the time was Ames' pregnant partner, Aisha Harper, who was threatened by an officer at the scene, and their two children. You remember the story I just gave you? That Jerry, Jerry Williams, was okay with the actions of her police officers? And they only fired one officer. They paid out $10 million. May. 2019, Hector Lopez was shot and killed by police officers Nick Caladra and Chad Conner. These officers received a call regarding a complaint of trespassing earlier in the morning. While exact details of the incident are unclear, police say that Lopez shot when he reached to pick up a fallen weapon from outside the vehicle. Yet, no weapon was found. Ryan Ridica was shot by Phoenix Police Officer Jerry Koch. James Garcia was shot in his parked car at a friend's house in Phoenix. $10 million was paid to him. January 2021, Phoenix Police, off, 
police department reporting shooting 25 people. August 2021, the United States Department of Justice Office of Public Affairs now an investigation on the things the police department. Yes, Jerry's people. Because if you notice, Tucson and Phoenix are the places where we're having the biggest issues. And on Wednesday, an Arizona police officer was fired because he shot 61-year-old Richard Lee Richards nine times for a theft while he was in a wheelchair. Ryan Remington. But you let Jerry tell it, Jerry Williams, the citizens are the problem. If you allow the Senate and the governors to tell you, it's the citizens filming these police officers doing these wrong acts. Not the fact that these police officers are trigger happy most of them are performing cowardice acts and they're not using equal and opposite force based on what's being represented or presented to them. Here's what I want you to understand when I'm going through this. When I talk about the fight back, even when they spoke about the vindication, when you start hitting those pockets, because they're not talking about the auditors that got in there. They're not talking about these people that were suing based on traffic citations. They're not going through each and every lawsuit that these police departments are creating. They're also not talking about going after these police officers. They're just talking about getting vindicated and getting these cases dropped. I'm talking about correcting the behavior because if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. And even if an officer who has a choice to do an arrest, to follow an illegal order, an order that the Senate knows is illegal, an order that the governor knows is illegal, an order that the police chief, the lieutenant, the commanders know are illegal, All of them are culpable. Now, here's my question to you. The more and more I give you these stories, doesn't it sound like the real gang members, the ones with the code of silence, the ones that punish those that snitch, the ones that cannot hold one another accountable or culpable for their actions? Not sure if I'm talking about gangs or the police.